Hey guys, William here. Um, just checking in late night tonight here. It's uh, 2.45 a.m. on Saturday. Yeah, that's right, the 21st. Had to look at the calendar there. Um, just wanted to give you an update on the dishwasher project. It is done, complete. Uh, works like a charm. I'm really surprised that I got it all to work. Um, had a little bit of issues. We installed the dishwasher um, day before yesterday evening. That makes any sense. We, we installed it Thursday evening and did some testing running it and we couldn't get above 100 degrees in the water temperature. And you know I checked over the code, made sure it was turning everything on and we had tested it before we put it back in the kitchen and all the relays were working and everything. Well, um, through the diagnostics, um, I set it up a sketch just to click each relay on and off for one second. Well, I started counting. We have six relays. One, two, three, four. Well, you get to number four, and I don't hear a click. And then I hear five, click on, six, and then it started over. And again, relay four not clicking on. Well, relay four is the heating element. So, uh, we ran out of time yesterday to mess with it. So this morning I had uh, my help, uh, my buddy Josh Spencer, come up and uh, I think that's him dinging me now. Uh, uh, help us pull the dishwasher back out from under the cabinet, flipped it over, and sure enough, uh, relay four for the heating element is on uh, GPIO 16 of the ESP 12F. And <clears throat> somehow um, I use the DuPont cables. Um, I'll have a picture on the blog of them. Uh, the little lock inside of the, the wire uh, must have been bad or something. And it wasn't locking onto the pin. So, um, you know, I really should have just used some wire and soldered the connections, you know, permanently. But I wanted something kind of modular in case something went wrong. You know, you could unplug it, change a part, plug it back in. Uh, so we just ended up hot pushing it back on and hot gluing it. Well, while we were doing that, uh, I loaded up the diagnostic check again. And we noticed if you touched one of the neutral wires, um, the relay board would act up. It would, uh, like it was losing ground. Well, uh, we poked around, me and my dad, for a few minutes and found that where all the neutral wires come together... Well, there was a bad solder joint. Uh, missed a little bit of solder on one of the bigger wires. And so we heated up the solder and iron, reflowed the solder, got a good hot, good, good strong connection, uh, reheat shrink taped, taped it up, and that cured that. So, you know, it was kind of a two for one there that we found that air problem while looking at the other one. Uh, flipped it back over, reinstalled it into the kitchen, and... Um, I didn't record this live. I may do one tomorrow if if we run the dishwasher. Uh, but you can see here. I'll scroll back. Uh, I don't think it's going to let me scroll that far back. But anyway, uh, you can see here. I'll highlight it. Maybe you can see it. Uh, at 25 minutes in, we were at 118 degrees. That's the hottest I've ever had the dishwasher since I've been working on it so we know the heating element works oh and also just a side note we found our hot water heater was set wrong uh, standard here in the US is 120 degrees Fahrenheit and ours is only putting out like 90 degrees uh, so dad, my dad went into the closet his the master bedroom closet and turned it up to about 130 and let me tell you it made a difference uh, yeah my wife loves a hot shower man she, she loved it we turned it up uh, and it just helps with the water temperature. Uh, did notice the dishwasher does start out about 75, 80 degrees with the water coming in, but it does take a little bit for the hot water to reach to the kitchen from where the master bedroom is. Um, you know, to help with that, we can always prime it if we think about it. Just turn the sink on till the water gets good and hot, and then turn the dishwasher on. But you can see, at 25 minutes, we're at 118 degrees here. Uh, it climbs about a degree. Um, this is 10 second increments for the temperature. So uh, you're looking 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 seconds, which is a minute. 
so you're looking about a degree a minute, uh, which is uh, what um, the how-to that I followed, uh, which will be in the description below. That's uh, so what he said his was, about a degree a minute. So we'll scroll on down here. Um, we did pause it for a second. And... Uh, is it where we paused it? I'm not sure here. I'm showing a pause, but I don't see a temperature change. Uh, we did pause it one time just to open the door and shoot it with a temperature gun just to see how accurate this temperature sensor is. And it's pretty close. Uh, but we did notice the temperature the temperature drops quick in that thing if it's not running. Uh, I was thinking it was here that we'd seen it, the drop, but I think it was on down here that we paused it again. And then we've seen the drop. Maybe not. We got into, I'll scroll down to about an hour in. Alright, here we go. Um, 58 minutes in. Uh, we're at 143. Like I said, you know, that's amazing. Uh, we ran it for four hours Thursday, Thursday night or Friday night and couldn't get above 100 degrees because the heating element wasn't on and we didn't realize it. Um, sanitized uh, is considered 100, 155 degrees is considered sanitized per uh, FDA for home for for homes is 155 degrees in a dishwasher. So that's what I've got this set to is um, it'll wash up to 155 degrees and then it rinses up to 155. Um, the guy that, like I said, the guy who did this previously, he only ran his back up to 140, but my wife works in the public sector out in the public retail, and, you know, people come in there sick, co-workers come in to work sick, uh, you know, uh, my current medical issues, I really can't afford to get any sicker, stuff like that. My dad's up in age, so... We, I set it back to have it rinsed to 155 so that I know that there's no way there's any germs on the dishes when they get put up. So it runs, uh, it takes about another hour to get there, I noticed. We'll scroll on down through here. Okay, there's a drop right there, I see. I'm thinking of this when I paused it and we opened the door. As you can see, it drops. And then... It goes back up. Um, you can see we're getting an hour 46. We're almost at 150 degrees. Hour 52 minutes. We're at 152. And then right at the two hour mark, it would have been, oh yeah, here it is. This is where I paused it. Not sure why that other drop was there, but here's where I paused it. And uh, you'll see it drop off pretty quick. I paused it to, uh, to get the temperature with the temperature gun. And you can see 155, 54. Um, was really surprised. It only dropped about a degree. Uh, time I got it kicked back on, and uh, as you can see, it went right back up. And uh, I do have it set at 156 right now because I thought my timer was off a little bit, but it doesn't seem to be too bad off. Uh, so you're looking at right at two. It would have been right at two hours if I hadn't opened the door. And then you can see it dropped into drain and went back to fill. Of course, now the water hasn't hadn't been used at the sink for this whole time, so it was kind of cool. So as you can see, as it starts to fill up, the temperature drops pretty good. It dropped from 154 down to 137, but it didn't take it very long. Uh, I think it was right at 30 minutes to come back up. Let's see, 54, 55 right here. I take it tw exactly 29 minutes and 48 seconds. So you figure 
you know, uh, these are 10 second intervals, so it was right at 30, 30 minutes. So I got two, two and a half hours. That's really good. My wife said uh, back when it was the original controller, it would take three, three and a half hours to run. So, hey, we made improvements. And as you can see, it drained, dropped into the dry cycle. Um, I'm actually going to turn this off for right now because 155 degrees, man. I mean, it's steaming. <laughs> um, I believe they dry, they'll dry on their own. Uh, we usually don't jerk dishes right out of the dishwasher when they're done anyway. They sit there probably overnight most of the time. Uh, so, you know, a heated dry is not really necessary, I think. You know, saving power bill. And then, uh, um, the dry, I had turned the dry off, but I forgot to tell it not to try to dry them, so it kind of got stuck here. So you can see the temperature drop. 154 all the way to 148 within just a minute or two. So, I really don't think they need a heated dry. Uh, I hit the cancel button just to idle out the system. Uh, just to get it out of that loop of being dry. Uh, and everything went fine. So, uh, I'm going to do some code tweaking. Um, I've, got a clear, I've got a bunch of just random stuff that I was trying that don't need to be there. Make some comments in the code. And I'll probably end up getting it posted online for everyone to see um, within the next, I'm going to say week. Uh, I've got some things, some medical things coming up this week. So I don't know how much of it I'm, I'll be able to get done. Um, but I want to give a shout out to everybody over at the, um, I don't know if they call it Hash, the channel. has Hash Arduino on the Freenode IRC network. Guys there, Time Age, uh, P. Willard. Uh, Jamin, uh, Disc Wizard, who else over here, um, uh, I said time age, uh, Dasta, or Dasada, whatever you want to call him, all these guys, man, there's a big, uh, big, a nice group of people who try to help everybody out, um, give you a shot of my home automation software here, you can see I've got a dishwasher, uh, tile, um, I'm going to change all these around and try to clean them up, make it look nice. Um, but other than that, that's about it. Uh, as you know, I did put a little small OLED display in the door. Uh, I have i don't even have any screens built for it yet to say like wash, what cycle it's on, how much time's left, or temperature, stuff like that. But uh, I hope you enjoy watching the videos. Uh, I'll... Uh, me doing more hopefully i want to get into not really being a youtuber like dave jones over eev -E -E vlog uh which you know i've learned a lot from him over the last you know nine ten months here that i've been uh dealing with medical issues and stuff um but i want to get into just doing some diy stuff putting up you know projects because uh the little backstory on this is that we had a rat issue and a rat had got under the dishwasher and chewed the wiring up and burnt the control board up. And of course I was dealing with medical stuff then. I just had my dad and my wife take it down to an appliance repair place in the next town over here. And the guy calls me back and he's like, yeah, with the parts you need and everything and my labor, it'd be about 400 bucks. And I'm like, really? Um, I can go buy a brand new one at Lowe's for that if, if I had the money. So we bring it home, put it out on the deck, and, uh, you know, we've been hand washing dishes and stuff, and it, with my medical issues and my wife working, it's, it was a hassle. Well, I was browsing the net, and I found a page, um, a guy, an old school programmer that I used to talk to, had done the same thing about five years ago. I'll pull up the page here. Uh, um... I forgot what I was talking about now. Uh, I found this page, and he did the exact same thing. Um, I did use the ESP8266 uh, 12F version because uh, it's Wi-Fi, and I'm a geek, so I probably have the world's first Wi-Fi-enabled dishwasher. Uh, but I finally followed his instructions and how he did his. Uh, there's the control his control board. Mine looked a little different. 
but same principle, same relays. It's the exact same thing. And uh, I just kind of really followed what he done. Now he used a uh, he used automotive Bosch style relays here. I used a five volt relay bank for Arduino. Same thing, just relays on a PCB with some uh, control side protection stuff. Uh, he used an Uno and a 16 by 2 LCD. I used the ESP2866, like I said, and an OLED display. And I actually have one of these sitting on my desk right now, uh, playing with it uh, just because I can. So, uh, shout out to this guy, Uno Clocker, for his great write up. Um, oh, also, I just seen it there. Uh, most dishwashers have a thermistor. Thermo, thermistor? I don't know how you say this thing. Uh, mine was not a 10K. It was some weird, like 68K something. And you have to do math in the code, in your code, to convert it over to temperature because um, it uses uh, the resi uh, ohms resistance. And, uh, you know, I got aggravated with it. Uh, the way, where, how it said in my dishwasher, there was a little capsule. I was able to remove it and put a digital temperature sensor in that just spits out a temperature for me, which worked out really good. Um, more on that in the blog. Uh, the link will be down below. But I hope you guys enjoyed it and have a blessed day. Uh, I'm going to get out here and debug the code a little bit. Uh, we actually use the same exact same buttons. That's kind of funny. I used a white and blue one, uh, a white one and a blue one, because that's what I had, and he used red and green, which I really wish I had of now, but um, it all worked out. So uh, I hope you guys like these little videos I'm doing. I know I seem to ramble a little bit, but uh, yeah, check it out. Uh, like I said his link here, uh, the link here I'll put in the comments or in the description below. Uh, like, share, subscribe if you guys want to. Check out the blog or come join us on IRC Chat. Talk to you guys later.